Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about Cathedral Cliffs and we're just going to be focusing on the last boss over here because the mini boss is literally just DPS and there's a little laser line it might shoot out and you just stand between it and the boss and you just DPS it down. Very simple. However, on the final boss there are a lot of mechanics and they happen very very quickly. So over here we are doing it on easy mode, however the hard mode mechanics are exactly the same. Anyhow, so first of all, there's a couple of roles we need to take into consideration. So you can see over here that here's the map. Just totally ignore the map. What we're going to be doing is the moment you jump down, which is right here, you're going to jump down to from a platform down to the arena and you're going to land on this circle over here. This is going to be the quote unquote six o'clock and the tank is going to stand on the quote unquote 12 o'clock, which is right here, which is basically the opposite side of the party. And the reason why we do this is because we're going to be using a lot of the markers on the floor as indicators on where to stand. And we're not going to be using the map over here, the mini map, because this is actually technically where the tank is standing is technically like one o'clock, which just confuses people, especially when you start shot calling and the maps kind of split in a diagonal like this. It just makes things very confusing. And that's why I just use the ground indicators. So at the very beginning, it's quite simple. You want the tank to stand at 12 o'clock or this position over here, and you want the party to split into two groups. So one group stands on this little pizza over here, and another group stands on this little pizza slice over here. And these are going to be the safe areas. Don't stand here. Here is a dangerous area, and where the tank is is also going to be a dangerous area. And there's also an attack where the boss will do a 270 degree attack, which basically is all of this. And only this is going to be the safe zone. So we basically want to chill around here. And uh, because he does a backwards attack, which pushes people backwards, that's why we want to stay like in these little pizza slice quadrants just to be extra safe. So there's currently a bug on easy mode. And basically the boss goes into phase at 95% instead of 80%. On easy mode, the boss is supposed to go into phase at 80% and 40%. However, with the current patch and in this recording, the boss actually goes into phase at 95% instead of 80%, which is the quote unquote hard mode mechanics. So uh, just keep that in mind. I don't know if NC West or NC Soft is ever going to fix this, but just keep that in mind that we basically we're going to DPS the boss and we're going to go straight into mechanics because of the current scenario of how the boss fight is. Okay, so now let's talk about roles. There's going to be four main roles. There's going to be the tank, which wants to keep the boss facing this way most of the fight. Then there's going to be cleansers. So cleansers will be Biscuit over here and myself over here. Then we've got cutters, which will be Koopa over here and Alesti, which is the warlock. And then we have the far mark, which is Hima over here. Okay, so these are the main roles and I'm going to explain what each role does as the video rolls so that you can see what each person does at each phase. Because again, a lot of things happen very, very quickly. So let's roll the video. So we're going to start the fight. Very simple. You're just going to burst the boss, DPS him down ASAP, and the boss is going to go into phase pretty soon. He will always do the frontal slam like that, then the backward slam like that. And then right after that, you can see that he's charging up this cone attack right now. So let me just play the video a couple seconds more so you see it clearly and boom. So now you can see that this is the 270 degree AOE and that is why the DPS party chills here or here. You can see Biscuit, he's chilling over here. The reason is because he is a cleanser. I am also a cleanser. And the reason why you want to split the cleansers up like that is because you see these little circles over here. These little circles are going to have a cleansing buff and the cleansers want to pick it up. So I will be standing here later on and these two are going to be my cleansing buffs that I need to handle. They're my responsibility. And then Biscuit, on the other hand, he's going to be standing over here and he's going to be taking care of these two over here. And we're going to see that momentarily as we continue the clip. So DPS, DPS, DPS. And now it's going to go into phase. So you're going to see here that Ayanka is preparing the dive bomb. This is phase. This is the very beginning of phase. And if you are a summoner, you would want to use your party stealth here. So you're going to see me. I'm going to use my party stealth and boom. If you fail the party stealth there, it will knock everyone back. 
So all your, your party members will be pushed back, which is annoying because you lose a lot of DPS. And it also doesn't give people enough time to get into position and get ready for phase. And right after that, he's going to do a suction attack. Immediately, you just want to SS backwards or tab escape or whatever. Um, this suction attack cannot be iframed. You'll get sucked in no matter what. So I usually use my Z, which is my tab escape, to get back. And you're going to see here that now he's going to throw four feathers to the four furthest people. So what's going to happen is I'm number one. We've got Alesti over here. We're going to have uh, Hima back there. And we also have Biscuit, which is behind the boss. So us four are the four furthest targets. And we're going to get feathers thrown at us. And do you see these circles over here? So these four circles over here, in the first phase, two of them will light up in a random order. It's either going to be this one and this one, or it's going to be this one and this one. It's always parallel to each other. However, the order they light up is going to be random. And this is why the cleanser's job is a little bit stressful and you do need some mobility. But if I could pull it off on a summoner, I'm pretty sure most classes will be able to pull it off as well. So we're going to see now he's going to throw feathers on us. And boom. So immediately, you see he threw a feather at me. He's going to throw feathers at Alesti over here and feathers at Hima over there and feathers at uh, Biscuit over here because we are the four furthest targets. So you can see the tank is next to the boss and Kupo, who's a cutter, is also next to the boss. You just stay close to the boss and then the four furthest people handle the feathers. The moment that these feathers land onto Alesti, she's going to run close to the boss because her job is done. Her job is a cutter, she'll be cutting with Kupo later, so she can just run close to the boss. Hima's job, on the other hand, is the far mark, so she wants to stay and make sure that she is the furthest target. Usually we let the furthest target chill at 16 meters, so that she can still DPS and maintain the furthest range. While the cleansers, which is Biscuit and myself, we usually chill between 10 meters to 12 meters, and you're gonna see what we do now. So you're going to see now that Alesti is going to run closer to the boss and now he unleashes Divine Wrath. When he unleashes Divine Wrath, you're going to notice that now these pools appear. You see that pool over there? And if we go back a couple frames, you're going to see that there is a pool here and a pool here. So as I said before, that it's always parallel to each other. So if this one lights up, this one will always light up and vice versa. So if this one lights up, this one will always light up. And that's how it works. So this is what the cleansers need to pick up. So I'm standing over here and Biscuit's standing on the opposite side. So Biscuit will always take this one and I will always take this one. And if it spawns the other direction, let's say it spawns this one and this one, Biscuit will take care of this and I will take care of this one. And that's how it works. So you're going to see now, I'm going to pick it up. And the moment I pick it up, you're going to notice that I now have this buff, this 25 second buff, and you'll see that I have electricity around me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run into this feather, and you're going to see that this feather is going to get an AoE thingy once I run into it. So you see, once it has this AoE, it means that it is supercharged, and the steel feather will now shoot at the boss to give him a stack of electricity. You want to make sure the boss has two stacks of electricity before the phase ends or else he will wipe us. So you'll see that he's going to shoot that here, so that's one stack, and Biscuit does the exact same thing and is going to shoot the boss as the second stack. While this is happening, the far mark over here, which is Hima, she will not be able to move because the feathers will be aiming at her by default at the very beginning before we do this phase, and during that she will be dazed and not able to do anything. So just keep that in mind that if you are the far mark and you are dazed, don't worry about it. That's part of the mechanic. And the moment we complete our phase over here, she will be undazed and free to DPS again. So now we can do that with freely DPS. When we do that, the next thing we want to do is we want to stay relatively close to the boss. The reason we want to stay close to the boss is because when this happens, Frankie or the tank needs to be the furthest target after we stun the boss. You don't have to use stun, you can use KDs if you want, but I personally prefer stuns. So you're going to see over here that we stun the boss, and I cat pin the boss as well, and you'll see that Frankie is already way, way, way far away at like 16 meters or even further, just to make sure that he gets the mark. And this is where things get a little bit fast. So we're going to DPS, DPS, DPS. Once you see the tank have the mark, you'll see under his feet, he'll have this target sign. 
the cleansers, which is me and Biscuit, we need to SS backwards. We need to get to around 13 meters and everyone else has to stay relatively close to the boss, including the tank, because he will throw feathers at the furthest target. So you're gonna see here that boom, I'm at 13 meters over here. Biscuit is also at 13 meters. We're DPSing, but we need to be careful not to stand next to this feather over here. We need to be separate and like spaced out enough so that we don't touch the feathers. So our rule of thumb is I'm always standing over here at five o'clock and then Biscuit's always gonna be standing over here at seven o'clock. Um, if you don't wanna look at the mini map over here, it's perfectly fine. The indication on the ground is I wanna be basically on this line or on the left side of this line. Biscuit wants to be on this line. And then now he's gonna throw feathers at us. He's gonna throw the boom, and you see that he threw a feather at me and he threw a feather at Biscuit. Once this is complete, me and Biscuit are free to DPS and do whatever the hell we want. So we're going to get close to the boss and just DPS. And this is when the cutters have to do their job. So that is Kupo and Alesti. So soon after this, since me and Biscuit are free to do whatever we want, we're just going to run close to the boss and DPS. And then soon the boss is going to summon these pillars or these poles from the sky and they're going to land around the map. And you're going to see that happen now. So we're going to DPS, DPS, DPS and then kaboom over here so if you saw over here there's a pillar over there and there's a pillar like there so i'm going to turn my camera around to show you it in a second so you'll see that there's these pillars over here and there's a timer here that says like three two one it counts down and then you'll also see these rings start pulsing around it. So you can use the ring as an indication or you can look at the number on the ground. I personally look at the number on the ground. So it says three over here and I need to party stealth or home moon block or use a party protect over here before this countdown hits zero because if the countdown hits zero and you don't have a party protect, everyone will be blinded. So in my party composition, we use a party stealth and I will party stealth the party so they don't get blinded. So it's three, two, one, and then boom. You see that explosion over there? I party stealth, so everyone's fine, no one's blinded. So once that happens, the cutters need to run towards each of their pillars because the pillars will transform into an orb, which they need to block. So you can see over here that Alesti's here ready to block, and you'll see over there Kupo is on the other side ready to block as well. And you're gonna see these orbs float in. So we're looking, waiting, waiting, just pay attention here. And you'll see that they have turned into orbs and orbs. So the pillars, right after the party stealth or the explosion, they turn to orbs and they slowly start gravitating towards the boss. And what the cutters need to do, as you can see Koopa over here and Alessi over here, is they need to block the orb. The moment they block the orb, they will be tethered together with a yellow colored laser beam, which you'll see now. And boom. This yellow colored laser beam cannot touch the boss. If it touches the boss, it will cause a party wipe. And then the cutter's objective, so these two cutters, what they need to do is they need to get to the five o'clock feather over here and the seven o'clock feather over here. However, they're not allowed to drive the laser through the boss. If this laser touches the boss, it is an instant wipe. So what the cutters have to do over here and here is they need to move this way. So what Elesti has to do is she has to quickly move that way towards this feather. And what Koopa has to do is he has to move this way towards this feather. So by doing that, they'll both move this way together so that the laser doesn't touch the boss. And when they're over here, Elesti's going to start moving that way and Koopa's going to start moving this way. And they're going to touch these feathers at the same time. They, it's very important that they touch the feathers at the same time. If they don't touch it at the same time, this laser will not turn red and you'll be unable to complete the mechanic. You're going to see that now. So you see that they're rotating. You'll see that Alessi standing over here. She's slowly walking towards there. Kupo standing over here. He's going to use his SS to get here very quickly and he's going to get ready to touch this pillar over here. So we're going to see that now. So he's going to SS there, boom, and now Elesti also SS's over here, and she's going to get ready to run into this pillar, Kupo's going to get ready to run into this pillar. Remember, the timing is very important that they both need to go in at the same time, so communication is key here. So now they're moving, they're moving, they're moving, okay, they're telling each other, are you ready? Three, two, one, go. So you see that they both went in at the same time, and now this laser beam has turned red. And now 
that the laser beam has turned red, they need to cut the last spear. So this is the last pole or spear that went into the ground. So all they need to do now is Alesti needs to move behind the spear so that this red laser hits the spear. Once it hits the spear, the mechanic is complete and you can just freely DPS and you just DPS until the next phase. Relatively simple. You're going to see that now. Now Alesti's touching it. You see now it turns red and the laser beam's done. And it says that Ayanka has absorbed lightning. And voila, that is it. Phase complete. So that is the first phase. So Ayanka's lightning overloads and causes an, an explosion, which deals a lot of mechanical damage. And we freely DPS again. Next up over here is going to do a room-wide AoE explosion. It's going to be a 3 hit. Make sure to use a sheath or a home moon block just to protect yourself. You can use self iframe if you want. So over here we used a home moon block and immediately it's going to go into phase. So in easy mode it goes into phase at 40% and at 80% but again because of the current bugs that's happening it goes straight into phase right after the first phase. So now does dive bomb again, so I need to get ready to party stealth, and boom, party stealth done. Next thing is suction, I'm going to F roll out, or tab escape out, I'm going to DPS, I'm going to wait for him to shoot feathers again. This time, he doesn't shoot at the four furthest targets, he shoots at all six targets. So all six people need to get away from the boss, so that includes the tank. So you can see Frankie SS is here, Biscuit is there. Kupo is there, Hima is here, Alesti is here, and I am here. So we're all far away from the boss because the feather is going to come down and target us. And if the feather ever drops in melee range next to the boss, it is an instant wipe. So it's very important that everyone SSs away from the boss right after the suction and wait until the feather hits you. So now he's shooting feathers, boom, 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 boom. So you'll see that it's one, two, three, four, five, and six. So he'll shoot a total of six feathers. So right after he finishes shooting six of the feathers, now the cleansers are gonna get ready for mech phase. So the cleansers need to get ready because instead of having just one set of these orbs lighting up, now all four of these orbs will light up. And now as the cleansers drop, I need to stand into this orb, I need to move into this feather over here to activate it, and I need to stand into this one all in one motion. I need to do it very quickly because if you don't do it fast enough it will result in a wipe and the same thing for biscuit so biscuits over here so he's going to stand here immediately move to his feather and immediately move to this pool over here and you have to do it very very quickly or else you will wipe the party it is a little bit finicky because you can't just stand on the circle and wait for it to be activated you have to wait for the circle to come up light up then walk into it then quickly get to the feather and sometimes when you're at the feather it doesn't automatically light up you have to wait for like a half a second before it lights up then after that you have to get into the next circle so the timing is very very tight as for the far mark over here Hima's job it's exactly the same you're just going to be make sure that you're at 16 meters you're the furthest person and again you will be dazed however what's different this time is the two cutters the two cutters are going to need to block a laser because since now there are six feathers instead of four the far mark will not survive if all of the feathers hit her. So what the cutters need to do is stand in between their feather and the far mark and their feather and the far mark over here so that they block the laser. You're going to see a red laser that connects all of these feathers to the far mark. And it's very important that the cutters over here stand in between them in order to protect the far mark from two of these lasers. Because if they don't, then the far mark will die. So you're going to see that over here now once this happens. You can see that I'm already standing over here because I know that this is going to light up very soon. So I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. And boom, it immediately lights up. I stand on it, I absorb it, I go into this. Boom, this has been activated because it's now explodey and I immediately quickly get to the next circle. You have to do this all in one fluid motion, it has to be very, very fast. And while that is happening, you'll see over here that this feather over here and this feather over here, you'll see that Alesti standing here and Kubo standing here ready to block the laser beams that will hit the far mark right there. 
You're gonna see that and boom. While this is happening, now you'll see that there's a laser beam over here. There's a laser beam over here. Kupo standing here to block one of the laser beams already. Alesti's gonna move up a little bit to block this laser beam so that the far mark survives because the far mark will get hit by one laser beam over here, which is from the tanks. And the tank does not need to block this. He can block it if he wants. However, it's not a priority. It's just really important that the cutters over here do block their two lasers and then the far mark will survive. So once again, it's just going to be exactly the same as the previous first phase. If the CC bars are going to open. We're immediately going to stun the boss or KD. It doesn't matter. The tank needs to quickly get away to the furthest mark again. And then we're going to rinse and repeat. So you're going to see here, boom, the tank's far away. I immediately cat pin. So it buys the tank a little bit more time to get even further just in case. And you're going to see here, we're going to wait until he gets the mark. Boom. You see, now he has the mark. Once he has the mark, me and Biscuit, which are the cleansers, need to SS backwards. However, this time we're going to stand in a different spot because you'll see that we're still energized because we picked up the second circle. So we still have all this electricity around us and we need to cleanse that. So what we're going to do is we're going to stand over here. I like to stand right here at this circle over here. Biscuit can stand somewhere else. It doesn't really matter as long as you stand away from all of these feathers over here. You do not want to stand next to any of these feathers over here. It's very important that you do that. Because what the boss is going to do is the boss is going to shoot feathers at the two furthest targets, which again is going to be Biscuit and myself because we SS backwards. So we should be the furthest targets. It's important because the feathers get shot at us. So the moment the feathers get shot at us, it's going to get energized. You see, boom, immediately they explode because it was energized instantly because we had the energy buff. And that also takes away the energy buff off us, so we're clear to go. We can go back in and DPS again. So here we are, DPSing, DPSing, DPSing. And again, the two pillars are going to come down from the sky. You see over here, there's a pillar. There's also a pillar behind me as well. And then boom, they landed. And now you can see the number more clearly here. It says two over here, two over here. So I have two seconds before I need to do the party stealth or else people will get blinded. So here I do the party stealth, boom. You'll also notice that another pillar landed behind me a little bit later than the other two. And that is the big sword that they need to cut with the red laser or the big spear. So we're going to see that again. They're going to have to block the orbs. So you can see a little bit of the orb over here that Kupo's going to block. And Alessi is already standing over here to block the next orb. So boom. The moment they block the orb, they're going to be tethered by that laser beam. Boom, you see the yellow laser beam. So they need to rotate, make sure they don't touch the boss, and they need to get to the two feathers. So you'll see over here that again, it's the five o'clock position and the seven o'clock position. So they need to communicate well to let them know like, okay, who's stepping on what, and they need to step it on the same time. So here they go. They step out on the same time. Boom. Immediately, the yellow laser now turns red. And now with this red laser, they're going to have to go cut this spear over here. So Lesti's going to go over there. You can go as far as you want. It doesn't matter. It doesn't break. It'll never break no matter how far you drag it along. So technically, if Koopa was extremely lazy or a ranged person, he can just stand right here while making Lesti run all the way there. It doesn't really matter. However, since Koopa is a melee, he is a little bit nicer and he does move a little bit to help out Alesti. So you're going to see here that they're moving towards it and boom, they cut it and voila, that is phase complete. And that is it. That is, that's all you have to do. And then you just DPS the boss. Again, there's mech damage and it's going to die now. So again, it will do its AOE three hit explosion and boom, boom, boom. And it'll go straight into phase again. You'll see that is preparing dive bomb. And this happens three times total. So the third phase is the exact same phase as the second phase. So again, they're all four of these circles will light up again. And um, yeah, it's just the same thing over and over and over again. And voila, the boss is dead over here. And you can see on easy mode that you get 13 of the Elder Scale Fragments. It's pretty good, actually. I think I'm just going to be spamming this dungeon on easy mode because the boss has a lot less HP. Hard mode has four times the easy mode's HP. 
and I just feel like it's a super, super fast, super easy fight on uh, easy mode. But yeah, so you can see over here, Biscuit's insane, and he bids 60 gold for 13 of the fragments, and yeah, we're rich. But that's it. Relatively simple, very straightforward. This boss fight was a lot of fun to learn, and it's really, really interesting, the mechanics. Just need a lot of practice especially the cutters on communication because you need to make sure that laser doesn't touch it as for the cleansers the role that i was doing you just need to be very fast on your feet but if i can pull it off with 280 ms i'm sure most of you guys will be able to do it but yeah hopefully this guide was helpful if it was i would appreciate a subscribe share it with your friends let everyone know because i did kind of bust my ass for this guide i really do hope that it does help a lot of you guys out there and if you really love my work and want to go that extra mile, please consider becoming a member and supporting my channel. Speaking about members, I'd like to thank Pearl Style, Toots McGee, ST Sin 2, Lina Ren, Key, as well as Solar Hero for supporting my channel. And as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Bye. What can I say except you're welcome for the heals, the boosts, the rest.